Jay, I'm just doing a lick. This is number nine. And uh, Jordy, I, if you're watching these, and I know you are, you're, I owe you this uh, reference, and I'm going to put some, I spelled, misspelled a reference, I should take that out of there. So this is going to be a simple um, loon, kind of in the background, and I'm only using partial, part of the paper now, and here's the reason. I'm going to try to leave a lot of white in here. So watercolor doesn't require, in my opinion, this is all my opinion, the entire paper used to convey uh, what you're up to and what's going on. So this is what we're going to build today is this, and again I did the colors a little bit darker than I normally would. Uh, normally I would use a value in color, the value being lighter. So if you take a really light, almost white, and go to uh, black, in the, the values in between, let's just say 1 through 10, and 10 a lot, so you'd go from nothing, pure white, to a light gray, just a hint, to a darker gray, darker, 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 and then into black. And, and I'll talk about some color theory in these Jordy wanted to, uh, a little bit of yellow. Gives it kind of a green tint, and that's a, a hint on color when you start mixing colors. And you can see I'm just letting it move around. Now I'm coming in with the green. I'm just going to put the hint of trees in this. So these are in the background. And you can see when I put the land mass in there that's sticking out, it's not covering the whole paper. I did use the uh, one-third rule, give or take, so this is up in the upper one-third, and the focal point is going to be in the lower left. So uh, we'll talk more in uh, future ones about focal points. So I'm putting in some green, and I'm just letting the water work. I grabbed a small rigger brush and I'm going to put the silhouette of the land develop uh, as it were. So depending on the grades of paper, I have some really expensive paper that uh, has a, a lot of texture on it and uh, it, uh, it acts a little bit differently. So I'm going to come back in with my card. I'm going to show you how to do rocks with this card in one of these, but I'm, I'm just kind of scraping out a little bit of land mass. Then I'm going to put a few uh, branches up through the center here. These are primarily pine trees, and I didn't try to put other trees in there. But this card trick works really good with other trees. Now you notice where I scratched with the card in the lower right hand corner there? The darker pigment is starting to settle in uh, where I scratched the paper with that uh, credit card. And I just wanted a hint of uh, that in the background. You can see that the little different color mix that I threw in there. So, uh, to me, what's this missing? It's missing a little bit of the lights and the darks. So I came back with a hint of yellow. Just going to stick that in the middle here and where, it would, uh, where the light would be kind of coming through in the valley or between the trees, just to give it a little bit of uh, oompa. And I'm not trying to cover anything up with it. I'm leaving some white in the bottom. And I'm working sporadically and actually really rapidly. Now Jordy had mentioned that one of the is best with a hint at a touch of blue in there, and I'm just going to draw a silhouette of a loon. Now, the stuff in the background has less detail; it's fuzzier and it, it's more in the background. So I'm just uh, drawing in the silhouette of a loon, and uh, someone made a comment uh, in the painting there, and it has a touch of blue in there. I'm leaving the white kind of around the bottom, and I, you can see I got out of control there. And then the loon has the white in the front. So this is just a silhouette of a loon, and I am drawing it in freehand. Uh, you can take pencil and, and pencil in your drawing and then paint over the pencil. And you really won't have, uh, uh, it won't show. You can erase it, and a lot of times the pencil will uh, uh, fade or be under the drawing. So I, I'm, I'm putting just a silhouette in, and I'm leaving some white. So now we see that the loon is the focal point. He's on the left side, and we needed a little something in here. Now notice I left a lot of white paper and just a hint in the corner. And uh, to me, this looks good on watercolor cards or in a painting. So if you're using oils or acrylics, a lot of times you will paint the whole thing. In fact, you talk to some artist or look at listen to some artist, and they'll tell you 
white canvas or white paper scares me and uh, I have to cover that all up with color and then start painting out from there uh, to me the beauty of watercolor is uh, you're looking at little pastel uh, lighter colors and different values and hues and you're just getting a hint now you're starting to, to see that this is obviously a lake and I'm going to put a couple of uh, little fine lines in here but they'll be very 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 fine and that was just a very light wash of uh, Payne's gray and that will protect the watercolor uh, the more expensive paints are they tend to be more permanent and they don't fade as much over time so there's a quick loon uh, landscape study which is kind of a fun uh, little thing to do the trees can be any kind of trees that you like or have in your local area I could have put uh, some other trees in there you could change or some browns and, and stuff uh, with leaves I could have uh, made this a fall uh, color thing but uh, there you go there's number nine in that and uh, Jordy should get his kit here pretty soon there's a couple of uh, the rest of you out there that are commenting and saying that they're picking up their watercolors so uh, next week not this week I'm down in Iowa I'm going to go back uh, to basics and then start uh, talking about color a little bit of color theory we won't get real deep into it we'll talk about values and hues and uh, then we'll talk about placement. So, hey, thanks a lot. This has been Ben with Student on the Lake. If you like this, uh, click like. And uh, by all means, subscribe to the channel. Uh, thanks a lot. This has been Ben with Student on the Lake.